that it's the kind of reporting that has single-handedly destroyed the credibility of journalism around the world. All this story is are people inside the government who have an obvious interest in smearing Edward Snowden. They don't have the courage to put their names on these allegations, they're, so they remain anonymous. There's zero evidence for them. There's all kinds of reasons to believe they're not true. It's not journalism. It's just acting as subservient stenographers for the government. One of the things they suggest is that there are documents that Edward Snowden had in his possession when he went to Russia, and they make the suggestion that those documents might now be in the hands of Putin or his, his intelligence services. Um, and if that is true, then it would be legitimately worrying, wouldn't it? There's no evidence for the claims that the Sunday Times has made. And I think the critical point to note is that the key point, which is that Snowden had documents while he was in Moscow, um, was made through an absolute lie. They said that when my partner David Miranda was detained at Heathrow, he was found with numerous classified documents and had just come from meeting with Snowden in Moscow. In fact, David Miranda had never met with Snowden in Moscow when he was detained. He had never been to Moscow. And the Sunday Times has now quietly deleted that lie from its article. There's zero evidence that Snowden even had documents when he went to Russia, and he has repeatedly said that he doesn't, that he hadn't. But surely the assumption would be that he would have kept the documents with him when he went. That's a reasonable assumption to make, and that if he did take those documents, it's possible that they've been hacked. Snowden told me um, before he left for Hong Kong, left Hong Kong, that he had intended to destroy the, the set. He has said publicly many times that he gave all of the copies that he had to journalists and he purposely didn't take any when he traveled because he didn't want it to be vulnerable to being hacked. Um, again, you keep saying it's possible, isn't it? Everything is possible, but that's not journalism. It is reasonable, isn't it, though, that if a person is given the ability to live in Russia... Uh, protected by Russia, that there is something that Vladimir Putin is going to be getting out of it. The United States and the, and the British governments give asylum to thousands of people all of the time, um, including to Russians who are accused of committing crimes back home. And their argument is, well, the reason we do it is because we want to protect people from persecution at home. That's the same reason that Vladimir Putin gives for giving asylum to Snowden. Now, if you're a Westerner, you could say, when my government says it, it's true. But when those bad governments say it, it's not true. Well, I that's no a perfectly reasonable thing to no say, doubt. isn't it? I mean, you're not suggesting that Pr President Putin's government is on a par in its support of democracy and human rights with the United States of Britain, or are you? Pretty sure that it wasn't Russia that invaded and destroyed a country of 26 million people called Iraq or set up a worldwide torture regime around the world to torture people in secret or put people in indefinite detention camps in the middle of the ocean called Guantanamo. So I think it would be incredibly naive for some Westerners to say, my side is really good. It's Vladimir Putin's side. That's the bad side. I have no doubt that Vladimir Putin gets propaganda value by giving asylum to Snowden by being able to say we're protecting him. But I also have no doubt that Snowden would be persecuted with decades in prison if he went back to the United States for having done nothing wrong. And that's what asylum exists for. Finally, on just the wider point about the, the Edward Snowden impact, if I can put it like that, around the world, and, and it's been very much in the news recently, and you've seen the changes in, in law in the United States and a big discussion about it in Britain, and a lot of people saying, whatever you think of Edward Snowden, he has drawn people's attention to something that that needed to have its attention drawn to it. But, you know, the other side of that ledger, it would be reasonable to assume, wouldn't it, is that he has given away secrets that have been useful to people who want to do harm to other perfectly innocent people. I just wonder if you accept that, that those are the two sides of it, and that's what we've all got to live with. No, I think you just made that up, what you just said. Um, <laughs> Edward Snowden has not given any documents or any information to do anybody except through journalists with major media organizations. So if the New York Times or The Guardian or The Washington Post has published a story that you think shouldn't have been published, your quarrel is with them. Um, Edward Snowden didn't disclose any documents. He went to journalists and gave the documents to the journalists and said, I want you to work 
in order to find the ones in the public interest that the public ought to know. And I think the question that you asked is actually the key point, which is just a month ago, a U.S. court said that the NSA program we revealed at The Guardian was illegal. The U.S. Congress two weeks ago passed a law saying that one of the programs, the key one, should end. There's been a huge shift in media narrative to a pro-Snowden sentiment, saying, you know what, originally I thought he was a traitor, but now I see that actually what he did was quite important and quite noble. And right as that pro-Snowden narrative shifts, up pops anonymous, unnamed cowards inside the British government to smear him with these evidence-free claims. And I think that's really the story.